Welcome again, everyone. Uh, hope everyone can hear me okay. Uh, let's get started and we'll discuss lots of interesting stuff. And in between, if anyone has any questions, any yes, doubts, any confusions, feel free to ask. Raghuraj, uh, my screen is visible. Can you confirm? I said, guy, my plug. Uh, once again, I'm having issues with my uh, desktop, so I, I'm I'm sure okay. it must be visible. I'm I'm actually seeing it. Okay, once again. Adrian can see it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 All right. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Give me one Let's second. Go. Uh, Let's me... Go. Ashish, give me one second, please. Well, in this case, it has it has. I'm just uh, verifying whether it's getting recorded or not. Give me one second. Yeah, better to verify. Yeah. So till we figured it out, can everyone tell me where you're from? Like what, what time zone you are in? I am based in London. So obviously it is late evening for me. How about everyone else where you are all based? Houston, India, Houston, Spain, seven five. All right, good. Thank you. Hamburg, California. Yeah, all over the place. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And hopefully, it would be a fruitful discussion for every one of you. Colorado, Washington D.C. One a.m. or one p.m. Okay. Sorry for the delays, everyone. Uh, we will very we'll quickly start. The meeting has now recorded. Uh, it's started to record. Ashish, you can continue. Nice. All right, good. Thank you. So, uh, welcome everyone again. Uh, quick uh, things about me. My name is Ashish, and I am a senior technical trainer in Amazon London office. I've been with AWS from last three and a half years. I basically am a native of India. I worked in Dubai for a couple of years and then I moved to London three and a half years back. Uh, in academics, I have done my master's and then I have a little taste for it, literature. So then I went for a master's in English literature. Apart from technology, I'm a boring person. I do spend my time on DIY projects, sometimes gaming and some more technical content creation. I've been into previous roles like tech trainer, consultant, QA lead, systems engineer, and network engineers before. And I'm a certified instructor for AWS, Veeam, VMware, Microsoft, and Cisco also. Currently, I means last month I, I passed my latest Kubernetes certification. And if I talk in AWS front, I, I hold nine AWS certifications as of now. So let's get started. Enough about me. Let's get started with networking basics here. What I'll start with, I'll start with very basics of networking first, and then I'll go into the actual VPC implementation. I just want to ensure that everyone is on the same page, everyone gets the basic concepts right, and then we'll move forward. But in between, if you have any questions, I'm monitoring chat on a different screen. So put your questions on chat, and I would be happy to answer it. Let's see how we progress. So if I talk about physical networking, most of the people who are coming to cloud or migrating, they may already have a physical network setup, or they at least know about it. So let's try to compare physical networks with your AWS network. In physical world, when you need to connect devices, so let's say these are the physical servers, and I want to connect all these physical servers. Can anyone tell me what kind of physical devices I would be needing? If I have a task in hand that I have to connect these physical servers, what I would be needing? What I would be needing? Switch. Sylvan says, fine. All right, good. Switch, we will need that exactly. We will be needing switch. I'll go a little bit more back. What we will be needing at least minimum, see, probably you all are with a conception that network card already exists into a, net, into a system. But I come from the days when network card was not a mandatory part and people used to install it. Obviously servers would have it, but not normal desktop. So let's start from very basics. So a physical server would require a network card. 
That network card is a piece of hardware which will translate signal in a way that it can be transferred over the wire. And these network cards will obviously will connect to a switch, as you mentioned, and there would be cable connectivity ensuring that these all can communicate. A switch, when you create, a switch may have a limit. A switch may be creating a limit that say that say we can only have 16 port on a switch. Maybe we can have only 64 port on a switch. Maybe we can have only 128 port on a switch. So that would create problem that I can have only that much machines connected. What I need, I need to expand my network and probably what I would be doing, I would be adding another switch. This we call cascading or creating a bigger network in my environment. So this is how we create network switches. Now, challenge with this approach is, if this is a very big network, then there would be a lot of communication problems. It means consider a meeting, there are thousand people and everyone is trying to speak at the same time. Obviously that would create problem. So what we would need that, Time, we will need a VLAN, which is basically a virtual LAN, which will create logical isolations between all the physical network. So it is still physically connected at one place, but consider we divided them into smaller, smaller group, where whatever they talk, they would have it would happen only within that VLAN. It's a logical isolation. But once they are logically isolated, we would need one more device so that we can establish communication, and that device would be a router. So once all these things are taken care, then I have a physical connectivity working. Probably you will also need that once I have a network created, I may want it to go to internet because I may want to download something, access something, host my services, whatever. What you will do in that case, you would be probably having a firewall and this firewall will ensure that only legitimate traffic can come into network and all other traffic is blocked. And if you want to connect now to internet, probably you would be needing an internet router Maybe it is provided by your service provider, like in your company, like like for me, it is British Telecom who has provided the router. And once I have this connectivity sorted, I am able to connect to internet. So till this point, I haven't discussed anything on AWS. It is just basic, basic physical networking. Let's now relate the same concepts to AWS that how all these components relate together into AWS. In AWS, we do not give you physical server access we give you access to an EC2 machine. So EC2, you can think like it is a server which I'm getting hold of on which I would install my operating system, run my software, and I would be good with that. So that is what my EC2 machine is, which is basically equivalent of a physical server. We have network card also, but we call them ENI that stand for elastic network interfaces. So what ENI is, ENI is an elastic network interface, and this would ensure that I have a communication channel by which I can talk to external persons. So that is what a ENI would be helping me in achieving. So that a ENI is going to do. Once I have an ENI ready, then when I'm trying to go forward and send communication in AWS, we do not give you VLAN directly. In our definition of VLAN, what we give you, we give you something called a subnet. So what you will get, you will get a subnet, which is equivalent of a logical isolation, but there is a difference, we'll talk about it. So that is called my subnet. Then when the subnets have to talk to each other or the component within subnet have to talk to each other, we would require a routing table. And routing table is also exactly equivalent to, as you could think of, is your router. So router and routing table uh, functionality wise, they are same. Then obviously we need security. So once we start focusing on security, we use to provide security in physical world through firewall. We still use firewall kind of mechanism, but little differently. What I mean by that, we have component called security group and network ACL, which, is stand, which stand for network access control list, and they perform functionality of a firewall. They allow me to decline traffic or allow specific traffic if the need be. So this is what we get into AWS. In AWS, whenever you want to talk to internet, that time you would connect something called a IGW, Internet Gateway. So this is a one-to-one -one kind of a mapping or similarities between a physical world and a AWS world. I haven't introduced any component which is unique to AWS, but now I'm going to introduce that component, which is the topic of our discussion. What AWS is doing, we would expect a lot of customers would be running their servers. And we don't need a lot of servers to communicate with each other, and we want to ensure that whatever I do in my network, it should not interfere with others. So that's why what AWS has done, AWS has 
put all these components together into think like a box or a boundary, and that boundary is called a VPC. So whatever happens within a VPC, like your network card, EC2 machine, subnet, security group, they are all on that. That is all part of your VPC. So VPC is the bigger construct. Inside that, we have multiple components connected together. That's how all these things work, right? Brad has a question, security is for EC2 and NACL is for network. Yes, Brad, that is a good point. Security group is for EC2 machines and NACL is for the subnet. I would say subnet because network is a generic term. So subnet is where we protect it using a network ACL. So that's true. Now, so this is what networking looks like. Now let me go ahead and talk about VPCs. Any questions, anyone so far? Anything which is not clear here, we will go in deep details about VPC, but let me know if there is something confusing you or something which is not familiar to you. So let's talk about VPC. VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. Idea of a VPC is that we will give you a logical portion of AWS network connectivity. It is logical. So what a VPC starts with, that first you have to select a region. In that region, you would say, I want to create a VPC. Now, obviously, you all know about that a region would be made up of availability zones. So I'm trying to represent only two availability zones, but it is highly likely that there are more than one to more than two availability zones within a region. So if I start, let's say I'm building something in region one, and that may be made up of only two availability zone. Whenever I create a VPC, that VPC would be combining the or would be spread across multiple availability zone. It is not confined within one AZ. It is a regional construct. So wherever you create a VPC, it would be created in a region. So I would start creating this thing also so that you can relate to whatever I am trying to say to you. We can then connect and communicate on the console itself. Let's get started there. So I'm going to AWS console. Give me a minute. I'll bring a browser here so that we can access the console and get started from there. So we will talk about what it is and we will try to construct the same thing so that you can see how it is being actually implemented and what are the components associated with it. So we are now going for signing into the console and there we would create a VPC. So VPC is a regional construct that would clearly mean as soon as I create a VPC, I have to first select which region and then I would be creating other component. Now, we don't want a, a customer of AWS to first create all these things and then first talk about networking and then start building. We want them to start building as soon as possible. So what we do, we give them a default VPC available. So in any region you go, let's say if I select Oregon, I would be getting a default VPC available. So even if you don't want to create, you probably will start with default VPC. I have seen customers mostly create their own because default VPC is for a very generic IP addressing scheme and customer may want to have their own IP scheme. So this is what my console looks like. I am in Oregon region and now I am looking for the service which is called my VPC service, which is my isolated cloud resource. I am now creating a VPC there. When I create a VPC, I have to tell what kind of IP address range I am looking for. So that is called CITR, classless interdomain routing. This is a notation, a mechanism to say how much IP addresses I need within my network and how the IP addresses would look like. So whenever I am creating a VPC, here is my one option to launch VPC wizard, or I would probably go manually so that you can see everything into action. So I'm getting started here. Now I have some VPCs here. Let me create a VPC here and let's call it restart. VPC and sorry, uh, Oregon. So I can put that information there. Right. So this is my VPC and I am selecting here what is my IP address associated with it. So I would be needing a CIDR range to be provided and let's select CIDR address range as much as, as easy as this one, like it's 10 000 slash 16. I'm trying to keep the IP address same so that you can relate picture and whatever I am creating here. So I am now creating a VPC like this. I can give it a name, I can give some tags so I can then track it and then I would say create a VPC. So what is happening now? A logical construct is getting created for me. 
one more thing happens as soon as I create a VPC, four components get created for me automatically. Let me write it down so you know what actually happens as soon as I create a VPC. So my action was to create a VPC, but as soon as I said I want to create a VPC, I got automatically created a DSCP options. I got automatically DNS settings. I automatically got a default NECL, network ACL, and I automatically got a default security group. This happens behind the scene as soon as you click VPC creation, these components get automatically created. Let me quickly show some of them. So here you can see DSCP options are there. And one more thing, route table is getting created. Main network ACL is also created. So these components getting automatically created for you. Let me put a main route table also. We'll see them in a minute. Now, VPC itself can't be used directly. What you would be needing on a VPC, you would be needing there a component which is called subnet. So once you have created a VPC, then if you see this is availability zone one, availability zone two, I would now create something called a subnet. Subnet is a logical isolation. Think like you are designing a whole city. So when you design a city, that is fine. But within that city, you will then create blocks. You will create some areas. You will create some uh, uh, cluster of buildings. So that is what we call a subnet. So subnet is a component where my, uh, my resources would be created, like databases, EC2 machine, load balancer. And depending on my requirement, well, probably I would have some subnet which are public. I would have some subnet which is private. And this would be confined within an availability zone as you see in the picture. Subnet are a uh, availability zone entity. They can't go beyond an availability zone. And probably if you are looking for a highly available architecture to be created, you would end up creating subnet into different availability zones also. And this is same option, public and private subnet. The subnet would have IP address range, which is subset of the VPC. So whatever you created uh, IP address range of a VPC, you would take a subset of it and that subset would be assigned to all the subnet which I'm creating. And these subnet cannot overlap, means their IP address range cannot be contradicting with each other. They should be unique IP addresses. So let's go ahead and start creating a subnet now. We call it private and public subnet, but when you are trying to create a subnet, it is just considered a subnet, nothing else, right? So we'll see how we can go ahead and create subnet and what would then dictate whether it is going to be a public subnet or whether it is going to be a private subnet. Now I can select a VPC. I can filter it on a VPC, which we just created. And if you see, there is no subnet. There is a, now this is a different VPC, I guess. Let's do one more thing. Let's note down our VPC's name so that we don't get confused and we can filter out resources only for that specific VPC. So let me note it down. What is the VPC ID? Every VPC would get a unique ID associated with it. So this is my restart VPC. And here is my VPC ID, which is a randomly generated number created for me. Let me put it into my notepad so we can filter it later. Let's start creating subnet. So when I create a subnet, I have to tell which VPC I would, would be belonging. So I say it would belong to this VPC. What kind of name you want to give it? So let me call it public AZA. What I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to restrict it to availability zone A. So this is called 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. These are four in Oregon. So I'm just utilizing 2A here. That is my public AZ1. And what IP address I am looking for, let's see this information. I am looking for IP address in the range of 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Let's go ahead and create this. So 10.0.1.0 slash 24 is the IP address range. This is one subnet. Same place, I can create another subnet. I can add another subnet and let's call it private AZ2 or sorry, I, I put AZA, right? Let me check. Yeah, name I give AZA. So this is, I will also call private in AZA. And this is my AZA where I'm creating my subnet. Obviously it would need a different IP address. So let me take this IP address 10.0.11.0.24. So we'll go ahead and say 10.0. 11.0-24, that is the IP address ring. And now I say create subnet. Now, 
I have provided same information for both subnet. I provided just IP address. So currently they are not dictated as a public or private just by name. I call them public and private, but there are other component who would decide that what would be my private subnet and what would be my public subnet. So we'll decide and work on that. Now, if I go ahead and see if I filter my subnets here, I should be able to see that. Let's go ahead and check for the VPC, which we just created. I guess this was the VPC and we should be seeing subnets created here. So not this one. Uh, let's filter this VPC too. And now I can see private AZA and how I can verify that they belong to AZA. You can see they belong to 2A. Let's create two more and then we'll add a component on that. So I would select the same VPC, my restart one. And this time I will call it that this is going to be my public AZ2, AZ, uh, B, and I would put it into 2B and IP address range. I am going to select 10.02.0.24. That's the IP address I am looking for. Done. This is the one of them. And then I have called it public. Let me create another one that I am going to call private and that will be within the same AZ, which we selected to be here. For this IP address, I would be using 10.0.12.0.24. Let's get started. Any questions so far? Any doubts, any confusions? Okay, so once my subnets are ready, now I have a skeleton ready which means now I can populate it with the resources. I can start adding components on that. So what I have done, I have created these lines. These lines I think of like a network wire. And once my wire is ready or once my network connections are fine, I can now start adding machines here. So I can now start EC2 machines creation. And when I add a machine, when I add a EC2 instance, that time I can select which VPC it would belong. And within that VPC, I have to select which of the uh, availability zone it would belong and which of the subnet it would belong to. So let's say I'm just for imagination. I have a machine here called A. This is a EC2 machine. I can create other EC2 machines. B, I can create other EC2 machine. But this time for C and D, I have kept into a private subnet here. And then similarly, I can add machines or EC2 instances in different different availability zones, right? Now, I have a few questions to ask you here and let me know what your thought is on that. So consider there are no restrictions as of now. I want to ask you that three multiple questions. Can A talk to B? Can A and B communicate? What is your answer here? Third, why I use IP addresses? I'll talk about that in a minute. Good question. So can A and B talk? Yes, then everyone is fine with that. No issues. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the next one. Next one is, my, my question is, can A communicate with C? C is in different subnet. If you know about this one, C is in a different subnet here, and A is in different subnet. Can they communicate with each other? Everyone is going for no. All right, I'll, I'll come back to your uh, to answer. Now, let me ask you one more question so that I can then explain all the concepts in one shot. Can A communicate to H? Where is A? A is here, right? If you see this, so A is here and H is here, which is there. So everyone is saying no, right? All right. Let me disappoint you here. I would say everyone can communicate with each other right now. There are no restrictions. Why no? I'll explain it in a minute. But now, as soon as I have created this, what is happening that I have associated them in default VPC. I haven't selected any routing table and there is a default route table which automatically got created. If you remember, I said to you that as soon as I create a VPC, we get a main routing table created for us. And that main routing table is having entry which would allow everyone to communicate. Let me talk about that. So once all of my components are ready, I may want to talk to internet or do something, but before that, let's talk about the local communication. So these are all, all the subnet of this particular VPC, which we just selected. Let me filter it out. Let me filter all the subnet for the VPC 17E, 
and we should be able to see four subnet we created right now if you see all these subnet and if you keep going forward see this what it says it says there is a route table associated with them which is 2d 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 which means same route table and they have a network acl associated which is 891 891 891 which means as soon as i created a subnet here every one of these sub sorry every one of these subnet automatically got associated with a routing table and they automatically got associated with a sub with a network acl so network acls are implemented here like i am drawing whereas a routing table exists within the whole vpc network acl are associated on this so as soon as this happened what is the meaning of this means this subnet can route through this routing table this subnet can also route through this routing table same thing here and same thing here which means everyone can utilize this routing table hope everyone is getting the point so if i write down that this is my main route table let's see what is written inside that route table which would allow communication or not allow communication route table is like your google map if you have to go from point a to point b you put the destination Google detects where you are and you say, okay, show me the navigation and it will take you from one place to another place. Obviously you have to drive, but it would give you direction. Same thing is done by routing table. Let me go to console and see what this routing table entry is made up of. Let's talk about that. So if I go back and see this subnet and there is a routing table associated, let me go into this routing table entry. What is the entry of that? So I click on route table, my menu change and I'm on routing table. What we will do, I would just name it easily so that it is main route table and let's call restart VPC. So we know that because we would create one more route table. So as soon as my route table is there, let's see what it is doing. So this route table is associated with four subnets. See this. Now, this is my default route table, or I would say it is my main route table. Let me zoom out. So see this. So this is my main route table as we see. Now, what happens as it is main route table, all my subnets belong to it. And where it can route traffic to that is dictated by the route entries present into the route table. So if I see, this says 10.0.0.16 local and this is active which means that everyone within my network can communicate no issues at all there are some restrictions we can put but if we have removed all the restriction means i have actually enabled communication across everyone everyone can talk to each other that is the default entry right so the answer for my question I had asked, A can talk to B, A can talk to C, A can talk to G, H, whatever it is. Within that VPC, they can talk to each other, no problem at all on that. But should we control it? Answer is yes. Why? Because we don't want everyone to communicate and that's why we would introduce more components like security group, network, ACL and all. Technically, they can all communicate, but we would put some restriction ensuring that they can only talk to individuals, right? Now, Another question. In this situation, like you see this picture that there is an internet which is obviously outside of region somewhere. My question to you is, can any of my machines here can go to internet? Can these machines go to internet right now? Anyone, any thoughts, what you think of? Can these machines go and talk to internet? They need IGW, Adrian, exactly. So they do not have an entry that they do not know where your internet gateway is. Think of it like, let's say in your uh, city, there is a new airport and you want to take a flight from there. But the Google map has no entry for that airport. So airport physically exists, but unless and until the Google map updates its entry to go to that airport, you won't be able to travel to that point. So that would be a challenge. So internet would be there, but may not be able to communicate to it. We are not able to communicate what we would need for that. We would be needing a component which is called Internet Gateway. And let me just quickly go ahead and create an Internet Gateway. So I would go ahead here and there is my Internet Gateway option. I would select one Internet Gateway to be created. I will say create Internet Gateway and let's call it IGW restart so that we can identify what it is. 
Now, if you see this, I am not associating Internet Gateway right now. I'm just creating it, which means it is an entity which is waiting to be attached. So once I create Internet Gateway, it would be in detached state. Next action I would be doing is to attach this VPC. So I select attach VPC and this time I would be selecting the VPC of my choice. In this case, this is my restart VPC. I would select it and I would say just go ahead and attach Internet Gateway. So what I have done in this phase, I have established the physical connectivity. So now my VPC knows that there is an Internet gateway attached, means physically the airport is operational, but my subnets are not aware about that. How a subnet would be made aware? Subnet would be made aware about by that using a routing table. So let me go ahead and do one thing. What I will be doing, I can go ahead and say on my routing table, which belongs to my main route table of restart VPC. It is not right now aware about Internet Gateway. Let me go there and say, let me edit route and I want to add a route there, which will be representing this. Whenever I see this route, this is called quad zero route. Four zeros, quad zero route it is called. And this represents anything apart from this. This IP address is considered local, right? So if you want to meet someone, let's say you want to meet someone and you are into Boston, and if that person lives in Boston, I don't have to take a, a flight to go to his home or her home, right? Because it is in the same location. But if they live outside, then I have to take a flight, train, car, whatever transport available, and that would allow me to go to outside. So that's why I would be adding a route. And this time I would say my entry is for 0000. And this time to move forward, I am going to use an internet gateway, which is associated with my VPC. And now once I have created this entry, what I actually have done, I have associated a routing table entry in my route table for internet gateway so now my communication is possible so what we did actually right now if i go back to this diagram because we created a routing table which we so already had sorry default route table that allowed me to forward all my traffic to route table entry and route table will say okay where you are going if you are going locally i will forward you no problem in that so if you are going outside i would forward you also because now i know where is internet gateway so it would be able to forward you to internet gateway but it is not at all a best design because as you see it here everyone can now go to internet and that defies the purpose for me which i wanted to keep my public subnet separate we should have internet and i wanted to keep my private subnet separate we should not be having internet right so we want to ensure that we do not add entry for internet gateway into main route table because if you add it into main route table everyone is associated and everyone can access internet which you may not want in your real life so what i will do now i would create a internet routing table first thing i'll do i would remove this entry because i don't want everyone to utilize internet gateway so i will say no let me into the state it was created in so that is the default entry and i can't change it Next thing I would be doing now, I will go back to route table and I would say now I want to create a route table as that was a main route table. I will call it internet route table and this is for my restart, which VPC it would be created in. I would say restart VPC and I would say create. As soon as the route table gets created, it would have some local entry, means local traffic is always allowed. Nobody can stop it. See this, this entry is already there. So a person can go within city limits, no problem. If they have to go outside, they would need then a gateway. There can be multiple type of gateway. We are restricting ourselves right now to internet gateway. Done. Now I can do what? I can edit routes and this time I can say, I want to have my all quad zero route go where I want it to utilize the internet gateway. And this is my internet gateway. So if I now try to draw what I have done so far, let me go back to my paint here. Let me show that what I have done so far. So I have now a internet route table. This is my internet route table. And this internet route table is 
allowing me to go outside and then I have another route table and this route table is my main route table but main route table has entry only for local traffic it can't go outside whereas my internet route table has entry for local traffic as well as it has entry for outside world also which means it can take me to internet too should not be a problem right hopefully everyone is following along so that is what we did but now no none of my subnet knows about this route table so next thing i have to do is i have to now associate this route table with my subnet and what i will do my internet route table i would associate with my internet public facing subnet and i would still keep this subnet on main route table so they won't be able to go to internet so that is what i am going to do let me clear this out and i would probably draw it better so that you can see what it is sorry for this scribbling let me erase everything and let me create this thing so i have two route table one is my main route table another one is my uh, uh, default route table let me write down so this is my internet route table what i have in this i have an entry which is about 10 000 slash 16 that is going to my local then i have an entry in this internet route table which is 0000 slash 16 and this one is going through what this one is going through igw this is my internet route table what else i have i have my main route table what I see in route table main 10 000 slash 16, which is always going to be present, which is my local traffic. That's all. Which means once I have created this route table, though I haven't associated them, but once I associate how my drawing would look like or how my architecture would look like, let me show that. Once I would associate, I would say I want to associate like this. I don't have to say to main route table because main route table is by default associated. So currently what is happening, currently all of my machines are connected and say accessing main route table, all subnet. I would go ahead and say, no, I don't want this. I want little changes to be done. So in that case, what I will be going to do, I would modify my route tables and sorry, subnet entry and associate them with my internet route table. Let's go ahead and do this into console and see how it is actually done. So going back to console, give me a minute, I'll bring it up and we will get started from there. This is my console. Let me clear this out. Okay, so we get started and my route table currently, which is internet one is not associated to any subnet. If you see this, there are no subnet explicitly associated. All of them are still belonging to old route table. So I would say, no, I don't want that. I want public to be associated here. So, so I would say public AZB, public AZA, you please talk to route table one or internet route table whenever you have to send traffic out and remaining, you still keep on talking to your main route table. So advantage here is that now only my public facing machines can go out. Other machines won't be able to go out if there is a, if we do not have associated route table. Are we clear on this so far? Any questions, any doubts, any confusions on this? Anything which is not clear? Can you practice the webinar using Canvas Labs environment? I'm not sure about that, Eduardo. Maybe Raghu can answer that. Canvas, if there are labs, VPC is a very basic thing and it is not a chargeable entity. So I don't see it should be, a, I don't see there should be problem, but I would say Raghu can, can, can confirm much better rather than me on that. Right. Yeah, I can type that, Ashish. You can continue. I'll, I'll just type the answer here. Thank you. All right. Now, once this part is done, so maybe what is happening now that I have my main route table. Let me draw that thing. So I have my main route table here. I have my internet route table, and this is how my connectivity is. This is my main. So only few companies, few machines can talk, and there is my internet by which I can communicate. So that's how my communication is happening. What I'll also do now, if in case, let's see this situation. What if, if my machines D, they want to talk to external world. They can't talk to external world right now. 
Why? Because we haven't created that kind of association. So what we will probably do in our case, we would create something called a net gateway. What a net gateway is? Net gateway is a proxy, is a, a, a person acting on behalf of someone else. Consider like, let's say in your house you have someone or in your building you have someone who is too weak to go out or they are sick. So what you would do, instead of they going to groceries and other thing, you say, say, let me go and help you out. You give me the list, whatever you need, I'll go to the grocery shop, get it delivered at your home, no problem in that. That is the exact same thing with the NAT gateway is going to do, right? So what a NAT gateway is going to do for me, it would allow me to send traffic from private subnet to net and then net will forward that traffic to external entity and this will be done again through routing table i would need two component first component i would be needing is to create a net gateway and second component i would be needing is to add its entry into the routing table so let's go ahead and create a net gateway here so why we need net simple answer is if your private subnets wants to talk to external world you would be needing a net gateway for it it is a managed service, so you just create it. Backend logistics are taken care by AWS, so we will go ahead here and say, I want to create a NAT gateway. So whenever you hear a word gateway, it means this will allow you to go beyond your network. And we will talk about one more gateway in a minute. So let me call it a NAT gateway, and this is for my restart session. I have to put it into a public subnet, make sure. Why public? Because when it is in public, then only it can go out, otherwise it can't go out. So I would select that I have to keep it into a public subnet, like I selected AZA, and I'm saying connectivity type is public, and I would need an elastic IP on that. Elastic IP is an IP address which remains with your account unless you release it. Other IPs are dynamic. They would be going back to the system if you shut down that system, right? So now I say I want to create a net gateway. Net Gateway will also get a unique ID like this. So what we will be doing now, in my main route table, I would add entry for my Net Gateway so that those two subnet can talk to external world. So this is my main route table, right? And in this main route table for restart, currently there is no external entry. I would go ahead here and say, let me add a route here which would be for external world, but I don't want to directly go out, I would forward my request to who? To Net Gateway. And this is my Net Gateway, which we just created. And I would say, now let me save changes. So what happened now, I created a communication channel for external world. Or in a way, I would say what I did, now I have achieved this. I have a main route table, which is associated to two of my subnet. And in those two subnet, I have a NAT gateway entry. So these CDGH machine will forward request to NAT gateway. And these machines, A, B, E, F, they can directly talk to IGW because they are associated with internet route table. And that route table has an entry for IGW. So hope you are getting how the communication would happen. So in this case, communication would be happening from D, C, G, H, to net gateway and then net gateway will take their request forward to the outside world but if a b e f has to talk outside they can directly talk because they have an entry for igw in their environment so that's how our services would work like so their traffic will go here and from that you would be communicating any questions so far would be better to have two net gateway or it is unnecessary adrian it depends on your design see a net gateway, if you see, this net gateway is being deployed within one availability zone. You see the dot dotted boundary? This is in one AZ. Now, currently what is happening, your machine G and H, they are also forwarding traffic across availability zone, and then it is going outside, which means you would be paying for transfer charges between AZs. That is one. So charges may increase. Second, if this AZ zone A, the availability zone one goes down, that would mean my NAT gateway will also be down. That would be the situation when G and H won't be able to talk to outside world. So probably, and if you can afford, and if you have a requirement for that, because NAT gateway is a chargeable service, you pay for it. But if there is a need, what you can do, 
in these kind of cases, you can say, let me create one more NAND gateway here. So that would ensure that I have no problem at all and I can create routing table entries in such a way that these machines would be using this NAND gateway and other machines would be using this NAND gate. So that is possible, but this is again a thing you have to decide on your own that should we pay for this or are we okay to have no connectivity or I am okay for going on that. Is NAND gateway in a public subnet A? Yes, gateways are belonging to a subnet as you see here. So currently it is in a public subnet A. I haven't mentioned A here, but basically it is a public subnet A here. This is my public subnet A. This is my private subnet A. This is my public subnet in availability zone B. And this is my private subnet in availability zone. So this is what is currently happening, right? So probably if you're looking for highly available design, you may want to have a net gateway, which is outside on a different subnet. So probably if you want, you can create a net gateway here too and configure it in such a way that it forwards traffic from the local network. That's how your things would be working. Any questions so far, any doubts, any confusions on this? So what we sorted out so far, we sorted out how to create VPC, what subnets are, what routing table looks like, what is the role of IGW, what is the role of NET gateway, IP address mechanism. Now there was a question that, that why we are utilizing this particular IP address, which is 10.0.0.0 slash something. When in early days, in IP addresses were created, they have created two type of addresses. One is called a public IP and another one is called a private IP. So public and private IP are used for different communication mechanism. Like sometimes you will find people would have a pet name which their friends and family members call them with and they may have official name, right? So the same thing here. Private IP addresses, the intention was that these will be considered that they can't go outside. They won't be forwarded by a router. The router of internet service provider would drop these packets. It would be considered that they would only communicate. So think like this, this is your driving license. Through the driving license, you can go wherever into this country and it is a valid proof. But if you are trying to take a flight, obviously in that flight, it won't be considered as a valid proof for your identity. You need to have a passport in that case. So that is your public IP address. So public IP addresses are used when we need to go out. So what happened when initially the IP address designs were created, that time they decided that we should keep some IP address range, which is considered always for private IP address. So I would say private IP address range. So these private IP address range are into different different network and they won't be allowed to go outside what we are trying to do here. We have three range, four range actually, three are more commonly used, 10 series, 172 series, and you have your uh, 192 series IP addresses. So those will be utilized only internally, but not externally. Let me see if this is the maybe not the best article to see that, but hopefully, let me see see this so these are the ip address 172 series 192 168 series and then you have 172 3 series these are the ip address range which are created with the intention that these will be used for internal traffic like consider like can you have a phone number which is 911 in us no you can't have why? Because it is restricted for specific services, health, maybe health, sick police or fire or something. In UK, the number is called 999. In India, that number would be 100. So those are reserved number and they are serving a specific purpose. Similarly, these are the IP address range which are serving a specific purpose and only are considered private and won't be allowed to go outside. So that's why I have selected that private IP address range. Any questions so far, any doubts, any confusions? All right, so what I did, we had just created a custom VPC. Let's expand a little bit more on that. And VPC is a very big topic, even a whole day I can talk about it. Let me talk a little bit more so that how we establish connectivity to external world also. So this option you see at the top is for my internet gateway. 
what if if i have to talk to my on premises network you will find this lot that customers are migrating to aws they already have their data center and they now want to create a hybrid architecture so in that kind of cases you would be needing something called a vpn gateway that vpn gateway would allow you to communicate on to on-prem network and there are two methods for communication so we will create a vpn gateway gateways are used whenever you are trying to go outside net will take you from private to public internet gateway will take you from your vpc to internet vpn gateway will take you from your vpc up to your on-prem network so that is called my vpn gateway so this is what one option is I can go ahead and say, I want a dedicated connection on which no one else will be sending the traffic. I have so much data to transfer, and I want a private network created from my on-prem up to AWS. Think like you go to office from home to office every day, and you feel a lot of traffic is there on the road. If you have money, and if you have that kind of power, you can say, I want to create a private road for myself. Obviously, you would maintain it, you would be paying high sum of money, but that is your private road. So that is your direct connect. So direct connect is a dedicated connection which would be utilizing only your connectivity and only for connecting to AWS, and nobody else is using it. And you are utilizing it. is different from direct connect. No, it is direct connect. That's what direct connect is. So direct connect is a me mechanism where you have a private connectivity. But obviously, if it is a private connectivity, then there would be a lot of charges. Think of it. When I explain this in my classes, I say, consider you have to go from, uh, let's say, New York, you are trying to come to London. So from New York, let's say you took a flight and you are coming to Heathrow. I, I don't know why my pen is not working as expected. Give me a minute, let me fix this. So if you are taking this flight from New York to London Heathrow, one option for you is that you can say, I have so much money, let me book a private jet for myself. And only I would be going inside it. Nobody else is allowed, only I would use it. So that is my private jet is my direct connect. I would be paying huge amount of money, but I can decide what kind of private jet I need. I can decide what cuisine I want inside served to me. I can decide how long or uh, maybe what route we will be taking. So that is your direct connect. Costly affair, obviously. Another option for you is if you want to come from, let's say, New York to London, you would say, let me check if there are a commercial flight operator, maybe Virgin, maybe British Airways, they are running the flights. So let me book a ticket. Flight is already there. I am just paying for my ticket and it would be much, much cheaper for me. This is exact same thing happens when you connect from your VPC up to on-prem, that will be done using your internet connection. So that we call a VPN connection. So what we are trying to do here in this, we are trying to leverage the public internet and we encrypt our packet, obviously for security, and then we forward traffic to external world and then we connect to on-prem. So in this case, I am still able to go out and reach to on-prem, but my path is looking a little different because I am first going to internet. And from this internet, I would be then coming back to this on-premises one. But when I had a direct connect, which means I had created a direct communication channel and only I am talking on that. So this is the major difference between both of them. Direct Connect is giving you consistency. It is giving you performance. It is giving you predictable traffic, right? Whereas VPN is much, much cheaper, but it is limited in amount of traffic it can transfer. It is limited in the bandwidth which can be given to you in that case. So that's how your communication would happen. All right, so we just explored the surface. If we had time, maybe we could talk more, but obviously we have restriction in terms of time now. This is one aspect. Another aspect could be that I may want to talk to other AWS services also. Maybe I want to talk to DynamoDB, Amazon S3, Athena, because these services are running outside of VPC. They are public services, but they are running outside. So what current communication channel would be looking like? So let's say my machine F here says, I want to talk to SageMaker. Communication won't happen like this because this is public. So your request first go to internet, then your request will be coming back from internet. So you first send request to internet, then your request will be coming back from internet, and then it would be going and talking to SageMaker. 
unnecessary traffic going outside and coming in. This is not a very efficient design. So in that type of cases, what you can do, you can create a direct connection within your VPC and within your AWS service. That is what we call a VPC endpoint. So this VPC endpoint would ensure that we don't have to worry about going outside and coming back. Once I have this VPC and created, what would happen? My request will be coming like this here. From this, it would be forwarded to whatever service I am looking for to talk to. So that would be my way of communication. That is called my VPC endpoint. So that would be helping you to keep traffic local, right? So I'll stop here. I'll give a few minutes if anyone has any questions, any doubts, any confusions, anything which is not clear, anything which you could not understand or comprehend. Okay, thank you if very you much. Okay. I have a question. Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear okay, you. Okay, so I have a question. On that, uh, is there any uh, communication between the private with, with between the public subnet and the private subnet? Is there any form of communication there? Like if you need to access something in the private subnet from the public subnet, is there any route taking uh, control of that? Yeah, That's let me explain question. that. Okay, go ahead. Second one. Okay, second one, like, uh, is there a consideration in the route table for the public subnet within the VPC? Is there, can you repeat the second question? I didn't get that question completely. Okay, the second, the second question is, uh, is there any routing consideration of the public subnets inside the main route table? See, every subnet cannot okay. exist without a route table you would always, always be needing a route table. So every time you have a subnet created, that is having a route table associated. A subnet cannot exist without a route table. So if you see this picture, what is happening here, that I have my communication happening from A, B to this route table. And in this route table, what is going to happen, I cannot remove this local entry. So local entry is always there. Think of it, if you are a citizen of a country, no law can prevent you from traveling from within the country and you do not need any kind of uh, uh, proof or something for that. So what will happen if you are within that network, this entry always, always exists, which is your local network entry. So this entry 10.0.0.16 local is in every route table. It can't be removed, which means Anytime you connect anyone, A, B, C, D, A, G, H, E, F, they can talk, but we put restriction by adding other component like security group and network ACL. Right. So that communication is always there. There is no restriction you are putting. If you want restriction to be put, that time you would decide by creating something called security group. So that time you would say, I would put a security group here. I would be putting a security group here and it won't allow communication. So physical pathwise path exist on that path. If you want to put a barrier, that barrier would be your security group or a check post so that you would implement. Otherwise, it is all communicate communicable. All right. Now, Sylvian has a question. What about communication with edge? I don't understand. Edge means the AWS edge location you are talking, Sylvian. Are you talking AWS edge locations? Yeah, edge location. See, edge locations are connected on AWS own network. So this region which I'm talking about here, region, region is connected to edge location and that network is maintained by AWS. So let's say you have a service here that is your web server here and you are utilizing a edge location and there is a cloud front service you are utilizing from here what would happen your traffic will be going on aws network it won't be hitting public it won't be go to internet it would be going from within the aws network aws has network connectivity all over edge location so all aws region all of your edge locations they are all connected on aws network right so it will happen like that Next question from Preeti, can we use a single VPN gateway to connect multiple on-prem network? Yes, you can. So what happens when you create uh, this VPN, Preeti, that time you specify that what is my endpoint. So I haven't displayed this here, but actually what happens, give me a minute, let me clean this and draw that thing. 
So when you are trying to create this, maybe this is my office one. Maybe I would have office two. Maybe I would have multiple offices all over the world. And that same VPN gateway can be used to communicate on this, which we call a hub and spoke design. So yes, this is possible, right? So yes, you can do that. You can communicate. There is one component which is created here and another component is created on the client side, which is called client gateway or that is called CGW. So that CGW would be on office number 01. There would be a CGW created on office number 03, and they can all communicate to this VPN. No problem on that. They would still have their own network channels, but communication is still possible. Right? Any more questions, anyone, any doubts, any confusion so far? All right, then. So I'll stop here, and I hope you enjoyed. Please provide feedback to Raghu when he sent feedback form so that we can improve on this session and can get, give you more content to be successful in your careers. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for attending. Thanks, Ashish. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.